Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about that thing that has a few different names that we will go over in this video that connects to nodes or to classes or the circles that you see in a knowledge graph. Now for simplicity's sake in this video, I'm going to just call them relationships because it is a 10 minutes or less video and I don't want to spend a ton of time calling them a, done, a bunch of different things. But the list of things that they go by are relationships, edges, predicates, object properties. As you can see, there's a lot of different ways that people talk about this. But the simplistic way of thinking about it is it is the way that two things are joined. And I use that very specifically for, for this video uh, together. What is the relationship between these two things? All right, so let's use a simple customer purchasing database kind of scenario here. So normally in a relational database, you're going to have a table that is, let's say, your customer inventory. Those column names are a type of relation, right? So it's saying this ID, and then it gives you an actual ID. So you're you're defining that an ID then can be related to a customer, right? So that's what the, the row is showing you, is that an ID can be related to a customer, and customers became customers at a certain date. There's not a ton more that you can get from these relationships, because it's a pretty simple table. But this is not normally the end of the line for, for most giant databases or even small databases for that matter. So let's say you have another table and this is your customer transactions because you are selling things. You have customers and you are selling to them. Now, let's look at this for a second. We have another column and it just says ID. And then we have a column customer, which we had from before, but you can see the data here is a little different, right? The first time it was a name and now we have another ID. Why is that? Well, because this is a foreign key, right? So this is showing you that the customer ID from the last table should tie this table to that information. And then you can get the customer name and the date and all the other information that was in the other table, right? In a graph, you don't have to do that, right? So what you're doing here is there is this nebulous unknown relation and we all kind of know what that relation is because we've been working in in databases but there's a lot of guesswork sometimes in what we're doing and so if you did not know this id connected to that other table of customers that's that's a tacit piece of information so you may not know that this id connects to other information now we're only dealing with two two tables here, but think of this in a much larger scale and you can tell when other people are making a lot of other tables and, and pieces of information and they're coming from different sources and you don't know if the resolution is correct. Um, that is where things get tricky in all of this when you're just using tables. But when you're talking about relations, instead of having these two uh, tables, and by the way, in that, that Second table, we also have purchased, which is talking about a product that is purchased. And you can see here, it's another ID. So there is some other table somewhere else, probably with another list of IDs talking about different products and not in the second table right now, but you know, because these are transactions, there's probably also some time series data in here. When did they make the transaction? How much was it at that moment? Like there's some of that um, time uh, components that would be in these tables. So now let's look at this from a graph perspective. Remember, these relationships are explicitly supposed to be tying things together. So instead of having all of these foreign keys and different IDs all over the place, so you have your customer and that customer has an ID and it has like some of that annotation data, like when did they become a customer? All of those, by the way, those annotations, can also be nodes, right? So you can have a node on, remember these classes that are being connected together. You can have a node that says a customer has a first name and a last name. And you might think to yourself, well, why do I need to specify those as, as individual nodes? It could just be name, by the way, it doesn't have to be two separate nodes. The reason you do that is so that you can then put some constraints on that because maybe in your database, you do not want to capture corporate customers the same way you do individual customers. That means you may need to have these additional nodes that mean first name, address, and then you can point to the customer and have that relation defined. And here's where it gets special. That relationship can have a date. 
can have a date on it. It can have other information on it. The relationship itself can have metadata. And that is another reason relationships in graph are different than um, what you would do in a join or what you would do in you know your traditional column and row kind of data. So you can see here, we actually are representing the data uh, more explicitly. We are showing exactly how these columns are related to each other and how each of these tables even is related to each other and the data within. So making sure that, yeah, you have an ID column in both tables, but they mean different things. And so making that very explicit is something else that graphs allow you to do. So when you're building out these relationships, you'll notice that I am just coming up with names here. And that is how they are designed. You can have relationships that you can borrow from other ontologies. There are upper ontologies, video up above, talking about the difference between lightweight and upper level ontologies. But um, FIBO is always the example I use because it's an easy one to go and just Google. They have relationships already defined that you can reuse. And there's a lot of other, like if you go to BioPortal, there's other ontologies that you can borrow from the relationships they have created or you can create your own. So if you are translating your relational database into a graph, you do probably wanna look at the names of your, your columns to understand. And you, again, need to probably do some data cleanup on those and really make sure that they're really what you want when you're doing modeling because the modeling is a little different between relational and graph. But those are probably a good place to start. And again, think explicitly. How do I make this explicit? And the reason you want that is so that there is no more guesswork, right? You get better data quality. You, you all are on the same page. You don't need to know the secret handshake in order to query the data because it's explicit. And if you don't have things in your columns that you're going to want to reuse, you can create. And that's where I think a lot of folks get a little scared is the idea that, wait, I'm, I can come up with these relations, how two things are related to each other. Well, how do I know if it's right? Well, and that's a large part of building out an ontology is understanding what is right and what is wrong really depends on your use case, how you're modeling things. So I always encourage folks, Protege is free and open to use. And I have a bunch of videos on this channel talking about it. Go and just play around and see if when you populate the ontology or, or the knowledge graph piece of what you're doing with individuals, see if the modeling that you have done makes sense. So if we're modeling the, the graph that we were just walking through, and I see that in a bunch of my data, I did actually have some corporations instead of individuals. Well, now I know I need different nodes to account for that. Great, so now I can model that out. And going in and understanding, am I missing any data? And are there holes or gaps in not just the tables I'm using, but all the other data that's coming into the graph? These are also represented as relationships because normally you have this understanding of a data audit or a provenance or attribution in a graph where you can identify where does that node or the data behind that node come from? What database did it come from? What, what was the source? There's a lot of source attribution within a graph, which also is why it's really great for um, being able to recreate uh, queries, being able to do interoperability, making sure that you can add that trust factor, video up above, uh, for LLMs and chatbots if you are using graph and making sure that there's not as many hallucinations or you can trust the answers a little bit more uh, than, than what you would normally without some of these applications. So that's one reason that relationships in a graph are so important and so critical to really understand. And if you want some advice on how to create your own relationships, if you're new to this, please leave a comment down below and I'll make a video all about that. One final uh, comment is so often people are like, wait a minute, there is a thing that I use called the relational database. Why is that? Why do we, what, what's the difference between these two? 
And honestly, that's a huge piece of confusion to a lot of folks is we're talking about graph databases and, and just graph structures and graph modeling and ontologies and, and property graphs and whatnot and graph ML and embeddings, the list goes on. Uh, but they, we're talking about relations between nodes and people are like, well, wait a minute, there's relations in my relational database. And so that's why walking through a video like this and walking through, well, those are different types of relations. They're not all explicit. Here's how this looks in a more graph-like structure. Right, so that was a whirlwind on what is a relation in a knowledge graph. And I hope this has been very helpful to you. And I want to thank you very much. And I'll catch you next time.